Here we will be discussing pediatric shock. Shock is a condition in which peripheral tissue and end organs do not receive adequate oxygen and nutrients. There are four kinds of shock, including hypovolemic, cardiogenic, obstructive, and distributive. First we'll talk about hypovolemic shock. Hypovolemic shock is caused by low blood volume often due to hemorrhage or fluid shifting out of the vasculature. The signs of hypervolemic shock include possible tachypnea, tachycardia, adequate or low blood pressure, a narrow pulse pressure, slow capillary refill, weak peripheral pulses, normal central pulses, possible decreased urine output, and or decreased level of consciousness. The primary response to hypovolemic shock is to provide additional volume. Administer normal saline or lactated ringers, 20 milliliters per kilogram, as a bolus over 5 to 10 minutes and repeat as needed. If the victim is hemorrhagic, administer 3 milliliters of fluid for every 1 milliliter of estimated blood loss, a 3 to 1 ratio. Cardiogenic shock occurs when the heart is not pumping adequately. The signs of cardiogenic shock are as follows. Mildly increased tachypnea, while the work of breathing increases, and the victim may show signs of grunting, nasal flaring, and the use of accessory thorax muscles. Heart pumping is ineffective, and blood remains in the pulmonary vasculature, causing pulmonary congestion, edema, weak pulses with slow capillary refill, and cool and cyanotic extremities. The victim will have a possible decrease in level of consciousness. The primary response is to restore contractility. Administer vasodilators and diuretics. Utilize milrinone to decrease peripheral vascular resistance. If additional volume is needed, cautiously administer 5 to 10 milliliters per kilogram over 10 to 20 minutes. Note that a cardiologist or critical care specialist should manage cardiogenic shock. Obstructive shock occurs if there is a physical block of the blood flow. The signs of obstructive shock are as follows, cyanotic, hypertensive, chest pain, and respiratory distress without lung pathology or airway obstruction. In response to obstructive shock, the cause requires rapid and definitive care because they are actually life-threatening. Cardiac tamponade consists of pericardial drainage, while attention pneumothorax requires needle decompression and subsequent placement of a chest tube. The last type of shock we will discuss is distributive shock. Distributive shock occurs when blood vessels are dilated. There are three types, septic, anaphylactic, and neurogenic. The signs of distributive shock are difficult to recognize because the signs and symptoms vary greatly depending on the etiology. Possible tachypnea, tachycardia, low to normal blood pressure, a narrow pulse pressure, decreased urine output, and decreased level of consciousness are all signs of distributive shock. In septic shock, there's a decreased preload, a normal or decreased contractility, and variable afterload. In anaphylactic shock, there is a decreased preload, variable contractility, and the afterload is low in the left ventricle and high in the right ventricle. In neurologic shock, there is a decreased preload, a normal contractility, and a decreased afterload. The primary response to distributed shock is to increase intravascular volume, administer boluses of 20 milliliters per kilogram of fluid over 5 to 10 minutes, and repeat as necessary. The remaining responses vary depending on the cause of distributive shock. The initial response in septic shock involves aggressive fluid management, broad spectrum IV antibiotics, stress dose of hydrocortisone, and vasopressors may be needed to support blood pressure. Administer dopamine to normal tensive patients. For warm shock, utilize norepinephrine. For cold shock, administer epinephrine. If decreased oxygen carrying capacity is an issue, transfuse packed red blood cells. As blood cultures return, focus the antibiotic therapy to the particular microbe and its resistance patterns. 
and anaphylactic shock. Initial treatment consists of administering intramuscular epinephrine. Also give IV crystalloid fluid judiciously. Possible antihistamines and corticosteroids are additional responses. If breathing difficulties are present, consider administering nebulized abuterol. Note it is likely that third spacing and pulmonary edema will occur due to increased capillary permeability. The initial response to neurogenic shock has a limited ability for correction. Bradycardia is a clinical sign. Focus on boluses of 20 milliliters per kilogram over 5 to 10 minutes. Additional responses include treatment of hypotension that does not respond to fluid resuscitation. Vasopressors are needed. The resuscitation should be done in conjunction with a broader neurological evaluation and treatment plan. That's all for pediatric shock. Our next lesson will cover cardiac arrest in PALS. Thanks.